Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. Proud to be here with you where sports meets life. And as you know, inside of Dolphin Time, we have the opportunity to speak with student athletes, coaches, administration, future Dolphins, and alumni when it comes to our exclusive multimedia marketing partnership with Lemoyne College. I am very honored and privileged to have back on the show here with us this morning, Yaro Zavislan, here with us, the head coach of the women's soccer team with the Dolphins. And we have a lot of history on its way. So with that being said, Yaro, how are you doing today? Doing great. Doing great. Very busy preparing for the first Division One game in the history of women's soccer at Lemoyne College. But uh, we are looking uh, forward to this game and the trip starting tomorrow. Um, very, very positive outlook for our student athletes and, uh, and the team. Challenging time, exciting time, busy time. Absolutely, and and you know you led into it this uh, first ever Division One game for women's soccer at Lemoyne College, and the first divi- the first game of any sport when it comes to Lemoyne being a Division One institution in its entirety. There's been women's lacrosse D one games at Lemoyne, and there have been uh, baseball games Division One, but Lemoyne has never been a Division One institution as a full member. So to know that for the first time with Lemoyne being a full member D1 institution, the first ever game in that historical era is women's soccer. Just what that means to you as the head coach of this program. Well, we are very excited for our student athletes that uh, they are able to be in that spotlight. Uh, they work hard, they, they earn that opportunity. And we know we are going to represent not only a women's soccer program, athletic department, but the whole college community as one. And um, everyone, person associated with this program, with this college, is very excited about that opportunity that is there for, for us on Thursday. You know, and, and like you said, Yaro, to know that this is the first ever Division One women's soccer game personally to your program just how you've celebrated that and been excited for that with your student athletes and and your staff to know that on thursday win lose or draw you have the opportunity to start this chapter and, and you get to be the head coach of this chapter just what that means to you first of all great appreciation for all the work and effort that was put in by the leadership group of this institution president of the university board of trustees and athletic director bob Beretta, who's spearheaded this uh, reclassification movement it's been a great effort by everybody to get to this point and it seems like it's been a long time ago but it, it the time had flown by those three months here preparing from uh, the announcement has been made in May about the reclassification. All of a sudden, overnight, we need to start to work on our Division One schedule because the schedule that we had was all Division Two, and uh, everything was put into even higher pace than it was before. We are very excited that we are at this point uh, that. Uh, Within 48 hours, we'll be stepping on the field and play the first Division One game for for the women's soccer. Uh, we're looking forward to achieving those uh, historic firsts, first goal, first assist, first shutout, first positive result. We know that we have to earn it. We, we know that we have to earn whatever we get out of those games. And even though everybody talks about the reclassification process taking a few years, there are players in our program for whom this is the very last season of eligibility. So uh, it's all about uh, today, it's all about the season. Uh, Those players won't get another chance to have another season at college level. So there's obligation to ourselves, each one of us individually, but also to those players to to make the season the best possible season, not look for any excuses. All of a sudden, it's uh, Division One instead of Division Two. Having said that, uh, 
looking back at Division Two and any and experience, that was probably the best conference for women's soccer to be part of, preparing our team for the men's of Division One. It was arguably the best women's soccer conference in the country, and uh, how uh, almost every other game was like an NCAA tournament. Uh, game playing against against high level team the other games were very very competitive also so uh, we have that great appreciation for the past experience with uh, division two and any 10 but of course we have to look forward and look forward to raising the game not only one or two levels but in some instances three or four levels higher against certain opponents on our schedule you know, and, and speaking here with Yaro Zavislan, the uh, head coach of the women's soccer team at Lemoyne College for the Dolphins, in this edition of Dolphin Dive, which is also in our Road to D1 series, you just said it, that the NE10, arguably the best women's soccer conference in the country when it comes to Division Two, and that helping prepare you. Well, what makes you say that? What was it about the NE10 that you feel like is, you know, did, did everything that it could to get you ready to be a Division One program? First of all, there was uh, there were no easy games in any ten. Doesn't matter if you play home or away. Doesn't matter where the teams were in the standings any given week. Um, there was no no easy games. Every game was like a playoff game, and that goes to the credit of all the student athletes in that conference. Uh, great coaching staffs, uh, and also the tradi- tradition of uh, of any ten always being very competitive women's soccer conference the type of the student athletes uh, committed to the development as soccer players over the time they were part of those institutions you could see that um the the good coaching uh the, there was uh, there was there was no easy games every game that we would go in um uh, teams had to earn it there was there was no way the team just shows up and and expects to get the result on the field in any time. And in having that experience, like you said, that no games were easy, you know, you got to go through this past season as an interim head coach, so hey, it's been a little bit of a wild ride for you, for you, Yaro. I mean, I knew you beforehand, obviously, with Syracuse FC, and you come into this opportunity Right, the uh, women's soccer team had a change in coaches, and then it changed again unexpectedly. And when it changed unexpectedly, you had the opportunity to become the interim head coach. And in that interim time, kind of see, okay, you know, do you want to be there? Does the school see like there could be long term and whatnot? At the end of the season, very quickly, Bob Beretta and the staff say, yes, you know, we want you to be our official head coach, take the interim tag off. And so you go through your first season at Lemoyne with women's soccer in Division Two as an interim head coach. You come out of it as the official head coach, and then you move to Division One. What's it been like to go from interim to official head coach, and amidst all of this, to change an entire division in the NCAA? I have to give the credit to again everybody associated with the program, starting with the student athletes. Been going through the administration and support staff of the like, department led by athletic like, director for Beretta, uh, president's office, leadership on campus. Uh, it's been tremendous. That project has grown, I think, on everyone. It was mutually positive feeling at the end of the last fall season that uh, both sides felt like. Uh, this is just the beginning of the new chapter. So uh, to talk about, uh, you know, somebody can talk about the past phase of those changes, but uh, it has been made as smooth as possible, possible by everybody involved. Tremendous support on the campus for the women's soccer program and athletics. can say enough about it. And uh, again, at the end of the last fall season, uh, everybody felt like uh, it was such a positive experience and uh, progress has been made that uh, there has been a momentum generated and uh, this is just the beginning of that uh, of the chapter 
uh, with the reclassification to Division One. Yeah, there will be some growing pains. It's going to take time. But again, we are at the position right now that uh, it's all about the Thursday's game. The next game is the most important game because it is the next game. Just like for the players, the first play of this game will be the most important play of the game because it is the next play. And we just have to focus on, uh, on the next thing. In the long term, yeah, there is a plan. Plan of the growth of the program and uh, recruiting never stops. But uh, right now, the full focus of everybody involved is on the Thursday game. Yeah, you know, and like you said, I mean, looking at this game coming up, the University of Maine, you'll be on the road at the Black Bears. What does this opponent create for you? I mean, this is this is a historic game. This game, like you said, you know, where there's going to be a first shutout. There's going to be first goal scored, first assist. A lot of things that are going into the reality that Lemoyne is going to be making history the moment that you step on the field against the University of Maine. What can you say about this first opponent and what they bring to you on the field as the first opportunity in Division One? Great test, a great test for the first game. We have great respect for University of Maine women's soccer team. They had a very impressive season last year. Only lost three games all season. Uh, in the conference and regular season, they were undefeated. Uh, they feel that uh, there's unfinished business for for the players, for the coaches from last season, and that makes them very dangerous team. That uh, definitely has been preparing themselves with a little bit more edge and grit. When the team feels like there was unfinished season last season, they felt the. Uh, they had a very good shot at winning the conference tournament and going into NCAA tournament. They are returning the uh, vast majority of the key players. So for our group, it will be a very good test and we wouldn't want anything else but that. We want to find out where we are at at this point in the season. Then we'll have a whole week to prepare ourselves for the next game. So uh, it will be very good to face the good challenging team on the road. There are challenges that come with being on the road too, and it's a longer trip. So, uh, however, we are not looking just for the experience of playing the game. I mean, there's no reason to be part of the sports if you are going into the game just to get the experience and check the box. We are preparing the, ourselves to go out there, compete, and uh, try for positive results out of the game. And here with Yaro Zavislan again here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora inside of the Dolphin Dive Road to D1 series with the women's soccer head coach for the Dolphins. Yaro, why do you feel like this team made a jump last season? What was it about your student athletes that coming off of a season where they struggled to score, struggled to close out games, when you came into this program, why do you believe you went into last season with a team that had struggled the year before and you came out with a team that had made positive strides? Why do you think the team last year looked so much better, seemed to have more fun? What happened last year that led to this team producing more opportunity for themselves and at the same time looking like they enjoyed it? Paying attention to the detail and the preparation and during the games and maximizing the potential in all the areas of uh, being the best soccer player one can be. I think those are the two, two ways to, to improve chances of being successful individually and as a group on the soccer field. With the maximizing potential all the areas we talk about preparation, athletic preparation, talking about the conditioning, speed, agility, um, we go to the technical area, tactical area, mental preparation for the game and mental strength, talking about the game never being over or being out of reach. The game is never over no matter how many goals we are ahead. The game is never out of reach no matter how many goals behind we are. We, we keep playing to the last play of the game. 
And then there's also that uh, lifestyle pillar of being the best soccer player, student athlete. What do you do away from the training field? What do you do away from the game, the game field? Uh, how is your recovery, hydration, nutrition, sleep hours, sleeping habits? That is very important for for the soccer player or for an athlete to match. And I saw a still choice area of the best that he can be here. Nobody is at their best, they are sleep deprived. Uh, nobody is at their best when, when they are not putting the proper foods and, and drinks in their bodies. Take care of your body and your body is going to take care of you on the training field, on the game field. So paying attention and preparation with the tactical preparation, video preparation for the upcoming opponents, also analyzing our games and for the next opponent, fixing the things that we have to fix at the beginning of the micro cycle and then start preparing for the next team. That's one of the areas. And then, like we just said, maximizing your potential, fulfilling your potential as a student athlete. The academics is, is crucial in this picture too. Once the classes start, are you staying on top of the academics? Are you uh, getting ahead of the academics? Especially when few road trips are going to happen during your your uh, academic semester. It's very important that the players don't procrastinate and all of a sudden start chipping away from the sleep hours pulling some all-nighters before uh, before examinations, midterms, and so on. Yeah, it's, it's very important that everybody manages the things to their best, to the best of their abilities during the next three months. So then when they look back, they said, okay, we, put, we did everything that we could to put ourselves in the best position to succeed in all the field. And then there is no questions asked. Experience that they can look back at and say, okay, that was that was something special. The individuals involved in the team, and then also something special that the group has uh, kind of a straight bond of going through great experiences that they can look back and and talk about it even during the alumni weekends. And for you, Yaro, I mean, as you get ready for this and you get prepared for this and, and have that excitement toward it, and like you said, all this preparation to go into it, did you ever envision that you would be a head coach of a Division One program? That's something that uh, for everyone, life, uh, life uh, has its own way of having twists and turns and Sometimes you experience certain things and, and you move on to another thing, another level, and then you circle back to the environment again at the Division One level. So, you know, having experience with Division One, men's soccer space there, and now uh, circling back to Division One with the women's soccer team is definitely exciting. But uh, the experience that uh, I had as a student athlete as a player, as a coach. Every day we do our best as coaching staff to put our student athletes in the best position to succeed because ultimately it's all about student athlete having great experiences. And uh, that's the goal for the coaches. And we put that group of the student athletes in the best position to have a special season, memorable season, get historic first be part of it so at the end of this and say okay we did to have the most positive experience we could have and that's our job as a scholar it's not really about me as the head coach or or the rest of the coaching staff every administrator every coach every support staff member is working on behalf of student athletes to put them in an environment where they can succeed and they can have a great positive experience this season. And that's that's number one goal. And you talk about that experience, Yaro, and we know that with Ted Grant Field that your women's soccer team plays on at Lemoyne College, the new concession stands and restrooms being put in, just what that means to you for 
the you know the student athlete experience the fan experience the overall look of it when you see construction happening on the campus that you work on and you know that one of those pieces of construction is directly going to positively affect your game day experience around the soccer program just what that means to you as we prepare for a season we can see that work daily and uh, all that stuff evolving in front of our eyes it's, it's wonderful to see this venue has been already a wonderful place to to train and play games in and with the upgrades this just makes it even better for student athletes and for the fans for students on campus for the community it's uh, it's it's great positive change and uh, we we greatly appreciate that support that uh, institution leadership of this institution leadership of this athletic department provides for all the sports and in particular in our case women's soccer and so a final note for you Yarrow what do you want to say to division one to Lemoyne fans to the community here in Syracuse and central and upstate New York as we embark on history with you as the leader of this women's soccer program what do you want to say to the community? What should we know as we get to see you and your staff as well as your student athletes make history on and off the field in games and in the classroom? Great new chapter beginning. Great history to be made. We greatly appreciate all the support that we got till now from everybody involved in the program, everybody in the community. September 3rd, Sunday, September 3rd, is our our first home Division One women's soccer game on Lemoyne College campus. So we are looking forward to seeing great support in the stands. And on the field, we are going to do everything that we can to put a good show on and provide a great entertaining soccer game to all the fans, supporters, and the community. Well, that come from Yarrow Zavislan. Yarrow, as always, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your energy. And I'm just happy that I'm spoiled enough to have the opportunity to be able to talk with you over the years here and to be able to celebrate what you're doing. It means a lot to me from the seat that I have. So thank you for being a part of the show and having your student athletes be a part of it as well. And I, I really genuinely can't thank you enough for letting me be a part of this ride and see what you're doing because I'm very proud that, uh, that all of this is aligning and that we have good leadership and great student athletes that will take us into this new chapter. So thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dan, and thank you very much for everything you do for on college, uh, the college athletics and soccer program. We're looking forward to seeing you at our games and after the games. And uh, we're working hard to provide everybody with positive, great experience this season. Awesome. Well, thank you, Yarrow. I appreciate it. Thank you.